Welcome back to Banfield. I'm Brian Enton uh, in for Ashley tonight. We will return to our live coverage of the crisis in Ukraine in just a moment. But first, I want to share a major update to another story that we have been covering since the very beginning. Gabby Petito's family has filed a lawsuit against the parents of her fiancé and only suspect in her murder, Brian Laundrie. Petito was killed in August while driving across the country with Laundrie. He returned to his parents' home in Florida alone before disappearing himself. His body was found on October 20th. That appeared to be the end of the case. But now, Petito's father, Joe Petito, and mother, Nicole Schmidt, have filed a civil lawsuit against Chris and Roberta Laundrie. The lawsuit contains several bombshell allegations that were not previously known. According to the documents, we now know the exact day Petito died at the hands of Laundrie. It was August 27th. We know that in addition to strangulation, she also suffered blunt force injuries to the head and neck. The lawsuit also alleges that Laundrie told his parents what happened on or about August 28th, the day after Petito died. That's big. We didn't know that. And that his parents spoke with their attorney, Steve Bertolino, that same day. The suit also alleges that they sent him on, uh, they sent him a retainer on September 2nd, 2021. That very last detail, it is very interesting because of something their attorney, Steve Bertolino, said on this very show. Here is a clip from Ashley Banfield's interview with Bertolino from October 22nd. I'd like to just start with the simple. When did you become involved with the Laundry family as their attorney pertaining to this particular case? Yes, good evening, Ashley, and thank you for having me. Um, I would say that was on September 11th. He told Ashley he became their lawyer on September 11th. The Petito say he started representing them on the 2nd. I reached out to Steve Bertolino today about the lawsuit. He texted me this statement that you see here. As I have maintained over the last several months, the Laundries have not publicly commented at my direction, which is their right under the law. Assuming everything the Petitos allege in their lawsuit is true, which we deny, this lawsuit does not change the fact that the Laundries had no obligation to speak to law enforcement or any third party, including the Petito family. This fundamental legal principle renders the Petito's claims to be baseless under the law. Okay, so I want to bring in uh, Joe Tacopina. He is a civil and criminal attorney and the founder and lead trial attorney uh, of the law firm Tacopina, Siegel, and Diorio. Joe, um, the first thing I want to ask you is this discrepancy in, in when they hired uh, the attorney, Steve Bertolino. Is that a big deal in all of this? I don't think so, honestly, uh, Brian. I mean, look, it's a matter of days, number one. Um, you know, when they execute a retainer or when he actually commenced work are, are two very different things um, and or could be two very different things. But again, you know, I just read that attorney's statement and I had come to that analysis myself. Um, even if everything in that complaint is true, and I read the complaint, um, it, it's a baseless claim on the law. I mean, I think it's being done because they feel the need to sort of get justice. And I understand that the, the Petitos suffered. I mean, the laundry suffered also. Um, but but the Petitos really, they, they lost that daughter at the hands of, of this, this, you know, horrific human being who wound up taking his own life as a cowardly move. But but the fact of the matter is, it doesn't give rise to a claim. They're not alleging here that Laundry Laundry's parents knew about the plan to to kill Petito or or covered up anything. It's just that they knew and they were heartless because they didn't answer or it, it, it lacked civility because they didn't well, speak yeah, to Well, yeah, but I mean, but I mean, wait, wait a minute. I mean, I I hear what you're saying, but if if they knew and they were causing, I mean, you can only imagine the pain and suffering that the Petitos sure. were going through. If they in fact knew, I mean, isn't that reason enough to sue? No, no, it's not. Not at all. I mean, it's a reason enough to call them bad people or heartless, um, like the complaint did, but a reason enough to sue? Absolutely not, because they also have rights under the law. And 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 their attorney just went public and said, I instructed them pursuant to their rights not to comment in the press. And, and that's sage legal advice, by the way. That being said, it doesn't give rise to a civil claim. That, this claim will be dismissed out of hand, unless there's something we don't know. But but them not merely cooperating with law enforcement or the media or speaking to the Petito family about 
whether they knew anything, if they knew anything, by the way, these are mere allegations to the complaint. Um, you know, it, it doesn't give rise to a civil claim, Brian, it just doesn't. One of the, the biggest questions that I've gotten on Twitter today is people want to know, um, I mean, people have wanted to hear from the laundries for a long time and, and hear from them about what they knew and when. Would a civil complaint like this require them to give a deposition or to have to testify and, and come clean? That's a very good question. I mean, I think that's what the purpose of this complaint is. I think the purpose of this lawsuit is to get them on the road, to get them to be deposed. The problem with that is there's a real chance that this complaint will be dismissed in summary judgment motions before any discovery takes place, what's called discovery, any depositions of the laundries take place. Because I, I, I know that's the first move that the laundries attorneys are going to make. They're going to move to dismiss this um, for failure to state a claim. And if that happens, we don't get to the point of depositions. One thing that struck me, probably the number one thing that struck me uh, in this uh, lawsuit the most, Joe, was that they came out and said that on August 28th, Brian Laundry told his parents uh, that, that he killed Gabby Petito. But they didn't tell us how they know that. Uh, number one, Joe, is it unusual um, that they would they would make a claim like that in a lawsuit, but not sort of uh, back it up with with how they figured it out. Not necessarily in a complaint. I mean, a complaint sometimes is very vague, intentionally vague. Um, but I'll say this to you, and this is going to sound perhaps strange, but it doesn't matter. Again, um, unless unless they did something to to obstruct the investigation, which no one's alleging here, um, the fact that their son may have said, "Hey, yesterday I did something really bad. Here's what I did." And their attorney said, you know, don't repeat this publicly to anyone. Um, you have a right not to, to reveal that. I mean, you know, unless they were under a grand jury subpoena, um, which they weren't, unless they were under oath somewhere, um, you know, they were compelled to give this testimony, which they weren't. They had no legal obligation to give it. Maybe they were heartless. Uh, maybe they were not, you know, acting with, with the norms of a decent society. I think as the complaint said, it doesn't give rise to a civil complaint, number one. Number two, um, you know, we don't know if that's true. It's just because it's in a civil complaint. A lot of things alleged in civil complaints don't wind up being necessarily true. Um, I think they're piecing it together based on text messages. Um, if they had something that was, you know, uh, surefire proof, I believe in a case like this, we would be reading about it in the complaint. And you mentioned Heartless. One of the things that struck me the most um, in the complaint uh, was that it, it alleges that um, Brian Laundrie's mother actually blocked her phone from receiving any calls or text messages uh, fr from Gabby's family and blocked them on Facebook. So certainly some really alarming allegations. Joe, th thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.